so we're going to do a video on how to use a jigsaw. So the jigsaw lives right over here, um, and it has a few blades, so I'll just grab all of them so you can look at them. And that's all the accessories it comes with. So the same as, as most every other blade, when you're looking at jigsaw blades, the more teeth it has means it's meant for cutting harder materials, it leaves a smoother cut, um, but it cuts less quickly. If you have a blade like this, it has a lot, uh, it has not so many teeth, but they're big and it has big gullets. This one's also fairly long, uh, so it's good for going through thicker material. Um, I can compare that to a blade like this, which has many small teeth. This is meant for cutting metal, really like mild steel or aluminum. Um, this blade is fairly skinny, so it could be used for doing much curvier cuts. So if you wanted to do fine curves, you could use this. Um, and then here are just some others that are for cutting wood, and then again, they're just duplicates of the variety pack that we have here. So when it comes to putting blades into the jigsaw, the way it works is you pull this lever forward, and, and just for background, this is a Milwaukee jigsaw, um, and as with all the Milwaukee tools, it takes these 18 volt batteries that are charging up on the wall. So any of the red tools take these same batteries. Um, you see the battery life on here just by pushing the button, and this is fully powered right now. If it's not, you can just exchange it for one that's charging up on the wall. So when we're changing the blade, uh, you pull this lever forward, and when you do so, it actually pops the blade out. So you either need to be ready to catch it or just hold on to it so it doesn't shoot out. Um, then when you're putting the blade back in, you can just put the same blade back in. This is, this is a typical wood cutting blade. Um, you line it up in the hole and then pull this all the way back. And the trick is to push this blade down firmly. So you can just place it in, but that won't actually, that's not enough. You need to push it in that extra half centimeter and then release it. And now the blade is in straight. What will happen if you don't do that, if you just place it in and turn it, is the blade is at an angle. So that's not, that's not good. So put it in, push down that extra little bit, and then release it. So now it's good to go. It's sitting in that little groove, which is providing back resistance. So when you're pushing, the blade doesn't go backwards on you. Um, looking at some of the other features on here, there is this lever on the back, and this lets you change the angle of the base plate. So you remove that, slide this forward, and you can then change this angle. And then it registers right back to that zero position, which is where we're going to leave it. <clears throat> um, the, uh, another feature is right here. And so this is changing how much the blade oscillates. So if it's set to zero, the blade just moves up and down, which will make for the cleanest cut, and that's best for when you're doing curves. Um, but if you really just want to chomp through a lot of wood more quickly, you can set it up to one, two, three, or four. And what that'll do is it cuts, so it cuts on the upstroke, so it's pulling the material into the base. So it goes down to extend the blade and then cuts as you're pulling, as, as the blade is coming up. But then as it's going down, it actually moves backwards to allow the sawdust to drop out. So as it comes up, it can cut more wood more quickly. And that just, that just lets it cut wood more, more quickly and more aggressively. Um, so I'll show you what, what that looks like. I'm gonna pull the trigger very slowly so you can see the movement of the blade. So if I go like that, hopefully you can see, especially if you can see that wheel, you can see it moving forwards and backwards, and that's indicative of this blade just moving, moving backwards as it's going down to let the sawdust drop out. Um, so that's that feature. The only other feature on here is the, the lock. So if you're doing a whole bunch of cutting and you didn't want to worry about holding the trigger, you could push down and then, um, oh, actually it looks like I was wrong. So this is just, this is just a safety. So this doesn't lock in the trigger. What this does is just prevents it from being pulled. So you push on the right side to release it, and on the left side to lock the trigger. So I was, I was wrong about that. There's no, there's no lock on. Um, so those are all the features. I'm just going to demonstrate using it. Um, the, the blade doesn't.
doesn't care so much whether it's cross-cutting or, or ripping. Um, so for right here, I'm just going to grab some hold downs from the wall. So I've just grabbed two different kinds of hold downs just for demonstration purposes. This is a traditional hold down. The way this works is you put it in. Through the wood. As, as you notice, there's no dust collection. Um, this doesn't make very fine dust, it, it makes more of a, a more of chips. So, what you do is just grab the vacuum and you're done. Um, what people often do with a jigsaw is make, cur is make curved cuts. And so, if you're doing that, then it takes a little bit of practice to, to get good at that. And the, the real trick that, that comes with a little practice is pivoting around the blade. So, you can't steer it like a car and, and sort of push to the side, you need to turn right around the, the blade and that's how you'll keep a straight cut. If you don't, if you push, what'll happen is your cut is gonna end up tilted to the side. So the top and your bottom lines won't line up because the blade is gonna be deflected off to one side or the other. Um, so the, the trick there again is just to go right around the blade. Um, and See, is there anything else? I, I think that's about all there is for the for the jigsaw. Just make sure to, to vacuum up when you're done. Um, you can go nice and slowly if, if you need to, if that's helpful. One other thing is that if you are doing an internal cut in a piece of wood, so you're cutting out something on the inside, you don't want to come in from the, from the edge, you can drill a hole that's just a bit bigger than your, your blade and put the jigsaw into that hole and then cut around. So that lets you do an internal cut. You can't very, yeah, in general, that's a much better option than trying to come in at an angle. These, bit, these blades really aren't made for that, and we'll do a very poor job of, of cutting in from the top. Um, so that's really all there is to using this Milwaukee jigsaw, and when you're done, just make sure to, to vacuum up. Thanks for watching.